नमस्ते मूकं करोति वाचालं पंगुं लंघयते गिरिं यत्कृपातमहं वन्दे परमानंद माधवं नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग ऑल एट द आउटसेट आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स एंड स्पेशली मिस संहिता फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कनेक्ट विथ यू ऑल ऑन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म थैंक यू सो मच Today we will be talking about Puranas, epics, and Puranas are integral part of Indian ethos, and uh, that is the reason everyone, every layman, is interested in knowing about these things, and um, people want to know more because they know a little about Puranas. Why the Puranas are so popular? and uh, what is the content of it what makes them popular today we will be learning about it puranas are usually said and considered as the fifth veda why is it said so and what is the word purana exactly mean the word purana the word purana is a uh, like the etymology of the word purana is given by nirukta as puranavam bhavati puranam akhyanam puranavam bhavati it is old but still it is new with the changing time and that is the speciality of purana it contains lots and lots of stories and that is another reason why people are more and more interested in knowing puranas puranas are the scriptures so vedas vedic ritual and um, the performance of veda uh, vedic ritual was restricted to some class of the society and puranas gave the authority of performing some ritual some puranic ritual and doing some uh, like gestures to appease the gods to the common people that is the people of all the four classes and that is the speciality of puranas and that made them very popular puranas contain some well known characters they contain some mythological stories and that is considered as the base of mythology the stories are retold some of the stories from epics because after the vedas epics are the uh, texts which are very very popular in vedas epics means uh, the ramayana and mahabharata these two texts they are very important and very popular in uh, indian ethos after that uh, puranas they reiterate some of the stories and they tell the stories in their own style so the way of narration is so very simple and it is quite different from the stories which are coming in the vedas and brahmana texts and the stories which come in the ramayana and mahabharata text so they are made very simple and the language is very lucid that is another reason to make them popular when we talk about the origin of the puranas uh, actually the study of puranas as uh the texts for study or technical study we can say or study with the modern approach uh, started after 1840 when the westerners they took interest in puranas and they started analyzing puranas till then it was part and parcel of the living and day to day life of indians so nobody thought of studying the puranas when the westerners they started doing it uh professor wilson and uh, many other scholars they studied puranas after that the movement started and people started studying them analyzing them till then people used to follow them people used to listen them because we had the oral tradition for puranas and it is a uh, belief that all the puranas they are written they are composed in naimisharanya and 
according to the tradition, we believe that all the Puranas, they are composed by one single person, that is Vyasa. And Vyasa handed it over to uh, Romaharshana. And Romaharshana handed it over to Sutta. And the Sutta tradition, it continued for many, many years, many, many centuries. And Puranas were orally uh, given from one generation to the other. And obviously, as an effect of this, they uh, went on increasing. Initially, it is studied that uh, there was only one Purana. And later on, we had many Puranas. At present, how many Puranas do we have? Uh, we have 18 Mahapuranas. Then we have 18 Upapuranas. And along with this, we have 54 texts claiming that uh, they belong to this genre of literature that is Puranas. This is such a voluminous work. If we look at the volume of it, uh, Professor Hazra, who has studied the Puranas in detail, uh, he has given the estimate that how big this uh, volume of Puranas is. And uh, he claims that um, about Mahabharata, we all know that it contains uh, more than one lakh uh, verses. And these Puranas, they are more than uh, 40 times or more than that. Uh, I think they, they contain, uh, no, not four times. It's much more than that. It contains 20 lakh verses, it seems. So it is such a voluminous work. And how did it come to us? It is really very interesting to know. It is really very interesting to know the connection of Puranas with the Vedas. Uh, it is believed that Puranas are connected with Vedas. They are considered as fifth Veda. And uh, the story goes like this, that the five Vedas, they are given to Paila, Vaishampayana, Jaimini, Sumantu, and Romaharshana. So whatever came to Romaharshana was Purana, and whatever uh, came to Paila, Vaishampayana, Jaimini, and Sumantu were Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, and Atharva Veda. So um, as we have seen that Purana uh, came to Romaharshana from Vyasa, and after that, Romaharshana had six disciples. So Sumati, Agnivarshas, Mitrayu, Shamshapayan, Akratavarana, and Savarani. So they handed over the tradition of narrating the Puranas to Sutas, and there started the Sutta tradition. How Purana is related to Veda, and one very uh, famous saying we have that Itihasa Purana Bhyam Vedam Samupa Bruhayet. If somebody wants to know Vedas or wants to know more about Vedas, what he should do is uh, he should study the Puranas because that is the supporting lit literature. That is the very uh, literature which goes in line with uh, the Vedas. Whatever philosophy Vedas have stated, it is continued and it is made simple for the common man in Puranas. There is one more very famous saying, if a person considers that he has studied the Vedas and uh, now he knows everything, for him, uh, the text says that yo vidya chaturo vedan, the person who has studied all the four Vedas, Sangopadishadod Vijaha, even the Vedangas he has studied, or ancillary literature of Vedas and even the Upanishads. But if he has not studied the Puranas, Nachet Puranam Samvidyat, Naiva Sasyad Vichakshana, he cannot be considered as a wise person if he has not studied the Puranas. Uh, these are the five Lakshanas, these are the five things uh, which define Puranas. How you can define Purana? What is Purana? And Sargascha, Prati Sargascha, Vausho, Manvantaranicha, Vaushanu Charitam Chaiva, Puranam, Purananam, Panchalakshanam. These are the five uh, things which make it Purana. You can uh, uh, check all the Puranas on these parameters. These are the five parameters. And this um, definition of Puranas has uh, come in the Amarakosha. So, uh, Sarga, that is, the primary creation, the creation of the cosmos, the stories of creation, they come in Puranas. Then Pratisarga, the destruction, 
the innovation of the worlds, it comes in Puranas. Then Vamsha, that is genealogy of gods. Manvantara, regime of Manu. And Vamshanu Charitam, that is the uh, history of the kings and the princess and the solar and the lunar rays. Everything comes in Puranas. The Westerners, when they uh, introduced this idea of Ur Purana, that certainly was introduced on uh, the study the Westerners have done about, uh, based on the textual criticism, the way they have studied the Greek and Latin texts, they use the some theories about textual criticism. And using those theories, they stated that there must be only one Purana, which can be called Ur Purana. And uh, later on, it might have uh, got uh, like divided into different Puranas, or we can not divide it actually. We can say that a lots of other versions they might have come in afterwards. And uh, but the Indian thought it supports it because we already have seen how um, the Puranas have come from Romaharshana to uh, from Vyasa to Romaharshana and from Romaharshana to the Sutas. In the Marathi, we have the uh, surname in Maharashtra, we have the surname Puranik. It is not just the surname, but it is a tradition. Those people who talk about Puranas, those people who tell the stories of Puranas, they are called Puranics. And we have this tradition all over the India, everywhere uh, in Gujarat, in Bengal, and even in the southern part and in the northern part, we have this uh, custom or this tradition that uh, people go from town to town and uh, they narrate the stories from Puranas. And that is the way uh, these Puranas are preserved. And that might be the reason they kept on increasing because every narrator while telling the story he might have added some spice, some additional things uh, while the narration to make it interesting. And that might be the reason the uh, volume of Puranas uh, went on increasing. Avatara is another concept which uh, is the speciality, is the peculiarity of uh, Puranas. Um, many of us might know about the concept of incarnation, avatara of uh, God. Uh, here at the bottom of the slide, you can see a um, picture and it is the carving, which is there on the Mahabalipuram temple, uh, which is constructed in 7th century AD. And uh, it depicts all the 10 avatars, all the 10 incarnations of God Vishnu. So uh, it is considered that we have the concept of uh, four yugas. So Krita, Treta, Dvapara, and Kali Yuga. And all these incarnations, 10 incarnations, they are divided into uh, these yugas, like Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, and Narasimha are uh, considered as part of Krita Yuga. Vamana and Parshurama are considered as part of Treta Yuga. Uh, Ramachandra is uh, between Treta and Dwapara Yuga. Krishna between Dwapara Yuga and Buddha and Kal uh, Kalki in the Kali Yuga. So the very important, very basic, and uh, very popular concept of incarnation, the Shavatara, which we can see on the uh, panels of different uh, temples or even in uh, art forms. Everywhere in art forms, we see this popular concept of Avatara, and that comes from Purana. So that is one of the peculiarities of uh, Purana. These uh, Puranas, which we have seen that there are 18 Mahapuranas, 18 Upapuranas, and 54 different texts claiming that they are Puranas. All these texts can be class classified into uh, different sections. Uh, by using different parameters. So there are different ways to classify these texts. The very first classification is Mahapurana and Upapurana. So 18 Mahapuranas, which are big in size, which are more important, and um, which are earlier Puranas. Then we have uh, 18 Upapuranas, which are obviously small in size. They contain, they might have composed later on. So uh, like chronology wise, they, they have come later in the uh, picture. And 
the other ways to classify these Puranas are um, according to the sects. We all know that there are five popular sects in uh, which are found uh, prevailing in India, and they are Shaiva, Vaishnava, Saura, Shakta, and Ganapatya. Here you, we can see uh, the mention of Ganapatya sect is not there, but uh, there are Puranas like Mudgala Purana and Ganesha Purana, which belong to the set. And even the other Puranas, uh, other uh, sets, they have some Puranas like uh, Shaiva, Vaishnava, Shakta. The, the Puranas are classified uh, into these categories. Puranas are also classified on the basis of three Gunas. So there are some sat Satvika Puranas, some Rajasa, and some Tamasa Puranas. And what comes in the Satvika Purana, uh, this shlok narrates it, Satvikeshu Puraneshu Mahatmyam Adhikam Harehe. Hari, that is Vishnu, is praised more in the Satvika Puranas. Rajaseshu Cha Mahatmyam Adhikam Brahmanohu Viduhu. Brahma is praised and his stories are there in the Rajasa Puranas. And uh, the stories related to Shiva and uh, the greatness of Shiva is uh, narrated uh, by the uh, Tamasa Puranas. So, um, and in the ancillary texts, in the miscellaneous Puranas, uh, Saraswati and uh, uh, ancestors, they are praised. So their importance is uh, endorsed by these Puranas. Here we can see that um, what all we get from the Satvika Puranas, what we get from the Rajasa Puranas and what we get from the Tamasa Puranas, that is very clearly stated by uh, the scriptures. Uh, Satvika Puranas, as we have seen, Hari is praised. Mukti is uh, like uh, narrated as the main thing a person should, should achieve. Rajasa Puranas talk about Swarga. What a person uh, should achieve in life is Swarga. And Tamas Puranas, they talk about Nirvana. So uh, which gods are praised in which Puranas? This classification is very clear. And which Puranas fall under which category? That again is clear with this table. Uh, Vishnu Puran, Bhagavata Puran, Narada Puran, Garuda Puran, Padma Puran, and Varaha Puran, they belong to the Satvika branch, then uh, Brahmanda Puran, Brahmavaivarta Puran, Markandeya Puran, Bhavishya Puran, Vamana Puran, and Brahma Puran. They belong to the Rajasa and uh, Matsya, Kurma, Linga, Shiva Puran, Skanda Puran, and Agni Puran. They belong to the Tamasa uh, group of Puranas. If we talk about the chronology of the Puranas, you can see here. Uh, three distinct sections we have, we can see. And these three sections are some Puranas, they are composed before 500 AD. Some of them, they are composed after, uh, before 1000 AD. So after 500 and before 1000. And some of the Puranas, they are very later and they are composed after 1000 AD. So based on the language they have used, based on the references or uh, references of other texts they have given, and depending on the development of um, the uh, deities, Daivata Shastra, what we call, based on that, the scholars, many scholars have worked on these texts and they have uh, figured out that these Puranas, they might have composed later. In the early Puranas, we have Vishnu Purana, Markandeya Purana, Vayu Purana, Matsya Purana, and Brahmanda Purana. And uh, in the second section, we have Bhagavata Purana, Purva Purana, Agni Purana, Brahma Vaivarta Purana, Nilamata Purana, Skanda Purana, Vamana Purana, Vishnu Dharmottar Purana, Varaha Puran, Brihan Naradiya Puran, and Narasimha Puran. In the latter Puranas, the latest Puranas we can say, they, we have Linga Puran, Brahma Puran, Bhavishya Puran. Bhavishya Puran is full of uh, very modern uh, stories and um, some of the uh, very latest king, even some of the kings from uh, 16th century or uh, 15th century, their names are also there. Because again, the thing is, this is a uh, oral tradition. So people kept on adding uh, things and whatever has 
uh, happened in the uh, history, whatever has uh, referred in the history, that also has come in the Purana. So Bhavishya Puran is, I think, uh, might be the, because the uh, days, uh, the concept of uh, days in a week and their names, uh, that is uh, found in Bhavishya Purana, but uh, not the Sanskrit names, the English names. They are there in Bhavishya Purana. So uh, it, people might have kept on adding the things in Bhavishya Purana. So uh, that is certainly the latter text. Then we have Devi Bhagavad Puran, Padma Puran, Adi Puran, Bruhat Dharma Puran, Saura Puran, Ganesh Puran, Shiva Puran, and Kalki Puran. So based on the chronology, we have uh, decided, uh, we have divided these Puranas into three sections. Then uh, let us try to know about some of the Puranas in detail. Uh, we have Vishnu Puran. Vishnu Puran contains uh, 126 chapters and they are divided into six amshas, six sections, six big sections. And uh, certainly from the name, we can make out that it is a Vaishnava Purana. Some of the very important and popular stories which come in this Purana are Parashara and Maitreya story. Then we have uh, the Sankhya philosophy, mainly uh, lots of evidences we have that the Sankhya uh, philosophy is seen in this Purana. The story of Dhruva as pole star. Everyone knows the story of Dhruva, how he um, uh, got the, uh, like uh, what we call Adharapada. He got a place where no one can um, move him, no one can um, remove him from that place or displace him from that place, such a place he got. And that uh, story, which is very popular, that story of Dhruva comes here. Then um, this Vishnu Puran gives lots of information about the solar and the lunar dynasties. The very famous story of Ururavas and Urvashi, it comes in Vishnu Puran. I have mentioned this Pururavas and Urvashi story here uh, only because the origin of the story, very first Gveda in uh, the dialogue hymn. And after that, several times it is narrated in Sanskrit texts. And one of the plays is Vishnu Purana. Later on, one very famous drama, which is a uh, a uh, famous literary piece that is composed on the story of Pururava and Urvashi, which is Vikram Urvashiyam. And um, apart from this, the story of Krishna that comes in Vishnu Puran. So these are some of the peculiarities, some of the important points about Vishnu Puran. It is not possible to talk about all the details of all the Puranas, but uh, we'll just try to uh, learn about different things which come in that Purana so that we get a fair idea about uh, what all things are coming repeatedly in the Puranas and uh, which stories are coming in which Puranas. We'll get a rough idea at least. Markandeya Puran is another very famous and celebrated Purana which contains 137 chapters and um, the story of Harish Chandra, which again is, uh, it comes from Mahabharata and later on, uh, lots of places, the story of Harish Chandra is narrated. It, is, uh, it has come and uh, always um, the example of Harish Chandra is given that um, whenever somebody come, uh, like uh, came to him and asked him something, he never said no, and he he is uh, considered as the person who has donated uh, many things, even his wife and his family. He sacrificed to keep his words. 
and uh, for that we all know Harishchandra. He is a very famous uh, mythological character, and the story of Harishchandra for the very first time. Uh, not for the very first time because it also comes in Mahabharata, but it comes in Mahara, uh, Markandeya Puran. It is narrated elaborately. Lots of such Mahabharata stories they come in um, Markandeya Puran. The concepts like karma, rebirth, samsara, and description of hell. If a person doesn't believe uh, behave nicely or he makes mistakes, he commits sins. He goes to hell. That is a very famous concept. And what all sufferings a person gets in hell? They are uh, described in Markandeya Purana. The concept of Shraddha, that again comes in Markandeya Purana. Uh, we can see the movement of Bhakti, which started with uh, the Southern Alavara tradition. That gets reflected in the Puranas. So many of the Puranas, they uh, elaborately give the examples of um, the uh, devotees and even, the, uh, even about the deities, how the deities were um, uh, like praised by uh, laymen and how they were uh, worshipped by people. Devi Mahatmya is one of the uh, texts which is very popular. And uh, that is the 13th chapter of Markandeya Purana. It comes in Markandeya Purana. Then different manifestations of goddess. So um, different forms of Shakti, which are worshipped by people, they, they are described in Markandeya Purana. Lots of stories about um, goddesses, they come in this Purana. How the Shakti killed Madhu and Kaitabha. Then how uh, she took the powerful light from the Vishnu, Shiva, Brahma, and Indra. And uh, after taking the energy, she killed Mahishasura. And in the form of Parvati, uh, Parvati, when uh, she took the uh, black color, she turned black and became Kalika, how she killed Chanda, Munda, Shumbha, and Nishumbha. Then how did she promise? When the Asuras became powerful, she helped the uh, people on earth. She helped her devotees. Uh, those stories, they also come in uh, Markandeya Purana. In Vayu Purana, we have uh, 61 khandas and um, 2 to 50 chapters, uh, depending on the size of the khanda. It is quite uh, identical with the Brahmanda Purana. Uh, we mentioned that Sthala Mahatmyas are one of the important thing which comes in uh, Puranas. And here we can see Gaya Mahatmya, uh, importance of the place Gaya. Then we have uh, Pashupata Yoga, the description of some yogic practices in Pashupata Yoga, they are found in Vayu Purana. Krishna appears as Vasudeva. So, uh, the form of Krishna, the form of gods, they also keep on changing in every Puranas. So many of times people get confused when they read about uh, the deities in Puranas because many deities, they show different forms in different Puranas. There are some contradictory things about the gods and the goddesses. And even there are some, there are some contradictory stories so many a times people uh, face problems when they connect all these things together. And uh, like, for example, when we have the Ganpati festival in, uh, in the month of Bhadrapada, many people have the queries. Like um, we know that uh, like Gauri, the form of power, uh, uh, Shakti goddess that is 
Parvati is related to Ganesha in many, many ways. So uh, people always get confused that what kind of relation is there between uh, the Gauris which we have at the time of Ganpati and the God Ganpati. Because there are lots of other relations. There are different stories telling about different relations between Parvati and uh, Ganesha or the Shakti form and Ganesha. So um, all these Puranas, they are narrated by different people. And that is the reason many different stories, which might be self-contradictory uh, or contradictory with each other, they come in these Puranas. In Vayu Purana, we can see the information about the solar and the lunar races. Lots of uh, kings, their names are mentioned and the genealogy is told by these Puranas. In Matsya Purana, we have 291 chapters. The very famous story of Savitri and Yayati, they come in Matsya Purana. Some concepts which later on became the part of Dharma Sutra or Dharma Shastra, like the ritual which is to be performed by a, a householder, that is Shraddha uh, or uh, Dana or Prayaschitta. These things, they are discussed a lot in Matsya Purana. And whatever smart practices were there, which were carried out by uh, the people of all the four classes or people of all three classes, uh, they are described in Matsya Purana. And the very uh, interesting concept of Yuga Dharma, that the, uh, the form of religion goes on changing in every Yuga. According to the Yuga, the form changes and it becomes more and more simple for the common people. So whatever people used to follow in Krita Yuga, it need not be followed in the same way in the Treta Yuga or in the Dvapara Yuga or in the Kali Yuga. So this concept of changing the form of religion, changing the ritualistic practices, it comes as Yuga Dharma in the Matsya Purana. And um, it is uh, very nicely mentioned there that Adhya Krita Yuga, Dharmaha Chatushpada uh, Syat. The religion had four, the, the religion was four-legged in Krita Yuga. Then in Treta Yuga, it lost its one leg and it became, it stand, it stood on three legs. Then in Dwapara Yuga, it stood on only two legs, and in Kali Yuga, it is standing only on one leg. So whatever mm, way of devotion you want to follow, you need not follow the practices and the rituals which are told in Krita Yuga or in Treta Yuga or in Dvapara Yuga. In Kali Yuga, you can take the concession of uh, not following the same practices as in Krita Yuga. Uh, then next we have the Brahmanda Purana. There are three sections, three bhagas and uh, 156 chapters in Brahmanda Purana. The famous story of Parashurama that comes here. Then the dialogue between Hayagriva and Agastya, uh, which is exactly similar to the dialogue of Hayagriva and Agastya, which comes in Vayu Puran. So my point here is many of the Puranas, they uh, share many stories, they share many uh, passages, many adhyayas, exactly like uh, they are in the other Puranas. Then the stories from uh, the uh, Brahmanda Purana contains the part of Adhyatma Ramayana, which is uh, which again is the story of Rama, but uh, retold or told in a different fashion. Bhagavata Purana is another one of the very famous and celebrated Purana, which is dated uh, before 1000 AD. It is divided into 12 skandhas and 335 chapters. Shaunaka requested to Sutta and then Sutta narrated the, the story to uh, Parikshita, which, who is the son of Abhimanyu. Many yogic practices 
and the bhakti cult shows its roots in bhagavata purana the story of daksha sacrifice is narrated here in bhagavata purana where um god shiva gets insulted by the father of uh, sati and he becomes angry and the body parts of uh, sati they fall on the ground and uh, the concept of shakti peetha it is related with this daksha uh, sacrifice story various different stories they come in bhagavata purana many stories are related to krishna like the story of gajendra moksha the story of ajamila the story of hiranyakashipu and prahlada these stories they come in bhagavata purana one very important thing i would like to note here is uh, bhagavata puran talks a lot about the life of krishna it describes the rasa leela it also uh, talks about krishna how he uh, is related to vaikuntha but the story of um, the episode of radha and krishna it is not narrated by bhagavat purana and it is not there even in the story of mahabharata where uh, the whole life of krishna is um, like uh, narrated but uh, the character of radha is not introduced there then we have this kurma purana in the first section purva vibhaga we have 51 chapters and in the uttara vibhaga we have 44 chapters the combination of vaishnavism and shaivism is found here in kurma purana the story of churning of ocean that is uh, found here in kurma purana lakshmi is treated as the wife of vishnu so some tantric practices they are also described here in kurma purana in the sthala mahatmya as we see banaras mahatmya the importance of kashi that is found here in uh, kurma purana agni purana is one of the puranas which is uh, which has got a form of encyclopedia because lots of other topics lots of uh, various uh, subjects they are dealt by agni purana and it gives the summary of tantric texts it talks about politics it talks about vastu lakshana it talks about medicine poetics it gives the references to the post vedic literature it talks about dramaturgy it talks about lexicography some of the lexicons they are incorporated in agni purana as uh, like some of the adhyayas so uh, it talks about chitra sutra it talks about uh, drawings and paintings so variety of subjects are dealt by agni purana uh, there is one more point that agni purana shows resemblance with the um, vishnu dharmottara purana lots of adhyayas they are copied as it is in both these puranas we can go on and on because there are lots of puranas but uh, we'll just talk about some uh, important aspects of these puranas now we have this brahma vaivarta purana <clears throat> which gives the story of radha and krishna for the very first time and uh, how the devotion to hari how the bhakti of hari is important in the kali yuga that is talked about lots of seduction stories they come in uh, brahma vaivarta purana like the story of indra and ahilya tara and chandra then we have this nilamata purana which again uh, 
talks about a naga king skanda purana is again one of the very uh, special and uh, such a puran that it contains lots of stories it is voluminous and lots of popular stories are found there like in reva khanda we have reva khanda of skanda purana we have the story of satyanarayana which is a very one of the famous uh, pujas which is performed by people in kali yuga so it uh, the story of it comes in skanda purana then we have vamana purana where again the story of daksha sacrifice that is uh, narrated here then devi's mahishasura battle that is again narrated here so many of the stories they are repeated by the puranas and many a times they are narrated in a different fashion or some of the times these stories they are retold as it is so whatever uh, stanzas are used by the earlier purana they are taken as they are we also have this varaha purana which has got 215 uh, adhyayas divided into two sections purva and uttara bhaga vishnu takes the form of boar and he holds the earth on his uh, teeth that is the main um, concept of this varaha purana so uh, looking at the time i think uh, we should stop i'll just keep some of the puranas and i'll jump to the conclusions we also have this bhavishya puran then devi bhagavat puran and um, padma puran apart from these puranas adi puran also we have apart from these puranas there are some jain puranas also like there is adi puran in jain tradition and we also have padma purana which is composed by uh, ravi shena in the jain tradition we also have saura puran shiva puran ganesh puran and uh, one more puran that is uh, garud puran people know a lot about this garud puran because the concept of hell and what happens when a person dies it's elaborately described and narrated by garuda purana and that is the reason um, when somebody dies in the family in those 10 days this uh, garuda purana is um, like narrated these are some of the general observations i have that is uh, puranas contain something about everything and that is the reason to make them popular some philosophical concepts like sankhya yoga these uh are there in puranas they contain many things variety of topics are dealt with by puranas lots of gods and goddesses they are different from the vedic gods and goddesses because they show the combination of human and animal body parts so the gods like hagriva narasimha ganesha they are the amalgamation they are the fusion of the body parts of some animal and um, human being so that the concept behind this might be human power and human capacity is not enough to handle some of the problems so if we combine the capacities and the strengths of different animals together to create a different animal different entity that might help to resolve some of the issues so uh, in some situations this human animal combination gods they are more useful and um, situations very complicated situations situations can be resolved with their help and these gods they are found in um, puranas mainly different gita texts are found in puranas as we have the uh, bhagavad gita in the mahabharata similarly similar kind of story but different people are involved different uh, characters are involved in this 
and similar type of preaching is there in this Gita and lots of other Gitas. They are uh, the texts of Gitas are found in Puranas.